I was afraid you would bring that up. <laughs> this is the, the, the uh, you know, and Durrell's Dur good people. Durrell's definitely good people. Um, this is kind of the, uh, the scenario of, um, I became, because I was the guy that had the equipment, I was always the guy that had the equipment. I was always the guy whose mom supported 100%, you know, maybe everybody else's parent didn't support 100%. My mom funded me up until I became an adult and was on my own. So she made sure I had equipment when I wanted equipment. It may not have been the 1200s I wanted, but I had two turntables, I had a mixer, I had records, I had a microphone, I had speakers, you know, I had an amp. So uh, she put all that on the table, you know. Um, and she really was a, that backbone. So consequently, I was the guy when people needed to do stuff, James has equipment. You know what I mean? And they would always come to my house. I mean, like, people would just traipse in and out of my... We did an apartment uh, over in uh, what's now called Beverlywood. And people would come in and out of there. I mean, the characters that would come in and out of my house that I met through friends, friends of friends, school, uh, the various schools, and just, you know, the community. That's how I met... I mean, that's how I eventually came to know the fellowship. It was through friends of friends. And so, um, Dur with the Curl... Um, he was again friend of friend came he um he was real tight with Ganja K. And um I I if I'm remembering correctly, um Ganj was like, well, you know, you need to make these little tracks. Um, you know, Durrell <clears throat> used to call in to uh K Day regularly. So he became like a character. Uh that this guy, uh, Bobby Jimmy, who was the, the radio DJ host. Durrell with the Curl became one of his like call in regular character people. And so um, because he was all about, I have this Jerry Curl and I'm going to ride Jerry Curl to the wheels fall off. That was him. You know what I mean? Like literally, he put it on the back. He bought this big 65, uh, I don't know if it was a Chevelle or um, and it was an Impala, 65 Impala four door. Gorgeous car. He had it painted nice. He took it down to Tijuana, got the interior done nice. He had like big. Two 15 inch woofers in the back seat, big, loud stereo. He put Dur with the curl in the back window and they're like, you know, low rider type writing. You know what I mean? Like the Dur with the curl. He announced to the world, I am Dur with the curl. Every Sunday we drive down Crenshaw, blasting the stereo. The world knew he was Dur with the curl. That was him. So he needs to do some tracks and he doesn't have equipment. He knows Ganja, you know. Uh, and, you know, I called him, it was Keyshawn. I'm going to say Keyshawn. He's Ganja. He, uh, we got connected, you know, he comes over to my house, we talk, we hit it off, we're just good people, two guys talking, and, and, you know, he's on a different page than I am, but I'm like, I'm willing to help, I'm willing to help, you're a friend of a friend, and you're now my friend, let me help you out, you know, and so, you know, I, I, I quickly came to find out, like, Ganja actually wrote a lot of the stuff that he performed on Bobby Jimmy, like, you know, he was kind of like that, I guess in a sense that, like, Easy e kind of came out, Easy E came out, he was just saying what Ice Cube wrote. That's kind of what Durrell the Curl did, and Ganja K wrote, you know, like, because he had the song that they performed to Friends, you know, Friends, tap, boom, 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 boom. How many of us have them? He made a song called Extensions. How many, how many girls have them? Extension, boom, boom, boom. You know, same thing, same thing. But Ganja wrote the lyrics. Kind of was a little hit on the radio skit thing that he did with Bobby Jimmy. And so he wanted to do follow-up and more stuff. He wanted to record more stuff. And, you know, Ganja was like, okay, miss me. I'm not writing more records for you. You know, and he kind of gravitated to me. I was a, another source of, uh, you know, creative input and help for him to get his things done and to be on the radio and be his personality. So we had that relationship. He would come over. He was another one of the characters. I mean, several people came into my house and did stuff, you know. Um, what happened was that... Um, there was an opportunity for Durrell to get a record deal. Uh, and it was through Jam Crew Records, which was owned by um, the owners of uh, World on Wheels, the skating rink. So um, it was a brother-sister team that owned World on Wheels skating rink, and they were offering a record deal to Durrell with the Curl 
he obviously had to have a record to record, you know. So they had a little studio. And, you know, it was one of those things where he comes over my house and he's like, I need to make this record. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, he's got a record idea and I just need to put it down. What ends up evolving is I end up writing his lyrics. I end up making the beat. You know what I mean? I'm like, I basically wrote it. You know, like I made it. You know what I mean? Uh, he had ideas and he knew what he wanted to do, uh, I believe, because we did... Um, Casey and the Sunshine Band, that's the way I like it, that's the way uh, 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 I like it, you know, so he wanted that Casey and the Sunshine beats and so forth, so I found the records, and you know, um, I don't believe at the time, matter of fact, I know we, I didn't have a sampler at that time, so we did it on my four track, we made a demo of it, just kind of like, I'd often do this, I, I would do like a manual sampling, I would put the beat down, like I had a drum machine, so I put a drum, a drum machine track down just for the track, just so I had the tempo, solid all the way through of four minutes or so. Then I would play two bars like doom, 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 then stop, right? Then wait two bars, then doom, doom, you know, I would do that for like four minutes, then come back on another track and fill in those gaps where I paused while I was bringing, you know. So I, I basically was manual sampling without a drum, without a sampling machine. So we literally recorded, we went to a studio and did that. We had no sampler. We were in a studio and I literally did a pause mix. We recorded it like a pause mixtape. You know, it was just the bizarrest scenario. Cause you know, little did I know, I could have just called, you know, studio instrument rentals and rented a SP12 for probably like $20, learned how to program it in 15 minutes and made the beat. But no, we did it as a pause mix. So literally that record, it's on vinyl, was done, you know, letting it go, pause it, letting it go, pause, you know doing it two bars at a time. I mean, it took hours in the dang studio. Anytime he messed up, oh, we got to go punch in. It was crazy. So we did that record, you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, I'm done. We did your record. You're good to go. And then he's like, well, you know, James, there's going to be a tour. I'm going to need a DJ. And I was like, well, I'm in school. Eh, but, you know, he, you know, he's a convincing guy, you know. And so I was like, okay, I'll DJ for you, whatever. You know, and then it's one of those things where he's like, okay, well, you're going to be my DJ, James. You got to, like, be my DJ. So you got to change your name to DJ Curl Activator. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, man, you know, I, yeah. this, is the, this is those moments in your life, you know, where you look back and you're like, I should have said something to my, something in my head was bells and whistles. But, you know, I agreed. He did his record. And I mean, even to this day, you know, we, we went to uh, BMI, you know, BMI ASCAP Performer Arts uh, Rights Societies. My name is in there, James Soombe, you know, professionally known as Durl with the Curl, professionally known as Jay Soombe, but Durl with the, I mean, DJ Curl Activator is in there. You know what I mean? And because we signed contracts, we, you know, I signed as his DJ. We had a record deal, it was, you know. Um, it only turned it to be one single, and you know, um, I have a copy of it in storage somewhere. But, um, you know, my mom, you know, she wanted like 10 copies of the record. She's probably as many records as we sold. Probably sold 20 records the whole time. My mom got 10 of them. Um, so, yeah, that was a scenario that happened. You know, I mean, I remember us taking publicity photos. You know, we posed. And I never had a jury girl, so get that straight. Like, there was one point, he, I even brought it up. Like, and I was like, that's not happening. I can guarantee you. That's where I put my foot down was, I will not have a jury curl. I guarantee you that. So that wasn't happening. So I was the, the DJ curl activator without the Jerry curl. But um, yeah, that was, awesome. that was that scenario. And you know, it, it was one of those like, it's like me doing that. I can see how, uh, you know, certain kids and certain guys end up in like McDonald's commercials doing goofy stuff. It's like you just want to have an opportunity to perform this music and, you know, these, you know, the people up top are people who have a mindset who want to get it done. Kids are starving to, to perform. You want to be somewhere. You want to do something. You know what I mean? So that was one pit, pit stop along the way, you know. From Dirt with the Curl, um, it's funny. Like, there were even connections there. Like, he had people that were interested in management. So we were running into what I would consider smaller time management people. Um, there were some, I don't even know where these guys were from. I mean, I, I don't even want to misstate, but there was these guys who were doing a video. They shot a, a, um, 
if you remember uh, back in that time, there were these little like, um, you know, uh, MTV was big, obviously, and you had like the Yo MTV Raps kind of show, right? And then you had like Pump It Up, that was like on Channel Nine or Eleven locally in LA. Um, but there were these people making these little video, like that was like a, 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 almost like reality TV is today. Like, who can make the next little video hip hop show? Um, also coming through Dirt with the Curl and through the um, you know um, Jam Crew Records and that whole thing, there were these two guys, videographers I presume, who wanted to make a show surrounded by mostly Jam Crew artists. So the two owners of Jam Crew, the brother and sister team, decided, hey, let's get in this project. All of our artists can be on this video. And then there were some outside artists. Uh, one of those outside artists was an MC called MC Big Boy, who happens to be the big boy who's on Power 106 now. He had a, a song called Married to My Microphone. Hilarious. I mean, like, I see him now and I'm like, wow, he's a major, like, L.A. figure and he's on the radio scene, you know. But he was, just, he was an MC, too. He was MC Big Boy. Um, but Durrell, Durrell ate that up. And so Durrell's personality, he got to the point where when they were about to shoot this project, they needed somebody to MC host it. And Durrell had the personality. So he was the natural choice. So it ended up um, Durrell and DJ Crowactiver, they're yours truly, are hosting this rap video show. And I don't know, it's somewhere in somebody's archive, there is a video. And we are introducing, I mean, literally, we did it like an MTV. You know, we're driving around L.A., God help me, we were driving around in a pink convertible Cadillac with a zebra skin interior. And like, we drive around LA, we go from spot to spot, we went to like La Brea Tar Pits and shot a little skit. We, we went to all these little landmark places to introduce a video. You know, we went to La Merck Park, you know, we're like, yo man, what's going on, so and so and so and so, well here's the next video, blah blah blah, you know. Um, so all this stuff was kind of going on, you kind of were meeting these people, doing these strange things and all this is happening in my spare time you know I'm still nine to five and I'm still going to school but whenever I can find moments on the weekends we're doing this kind of weird stuff this what is happening God I, I honestly oh I don't even remember what it was it was because it, it was it didn't exist it wasn't you know we were shooting it to, to I presume pitch it or put release it on video so yeah, um, okay. for the life of me, I it's somewhere in somebody's vault somewhere because they had a crew. I mean, they had the guys with the boom mics and the whole thing. I mean, they shot it like professionally, but yeah, it's for the life of me. I, if you ask Dora with the girl, if you find him, you know, I know he owns some car washes and stuff. He could probably remember that because um, he was big in it, you know. He, but I'm there, DJ Car Activator, you know, standing there in every shot.